and uh, especially chapter 9, which is uh, what will be considered today, uh, what is uh, being talked about are some basic techniques that are used uh, in what can be called molecular microbiology. Now, molecular microbiology is the, uh, the prominent thing that people in my department, the Department of Microbiology, uh, in fact practice. Uh, it involves looking at microorganisms very much from what can be described, of course, as a molecular perspective. Now, that molecular perspective covers such things as biochemistry, uh, it covers molecular biology, uh, it covers molecular genetics, uh, and it also covers physiology and pathology, uh, which can be seen as the interaction between uh, microorganisms and the uh, organisms that, in fact, they are causing diseases in. All of these things, in fact, all of biology has a molecular basis. Uh, not all aspects of biology study uh, those molecular bases directly because uh, what these molecules do is they give rise to phenotypes that can be seen at an organism level. And so it is quite possible to study simply the phenotypes. Uh, and it's quite possible to study the interactions of phenotypes and the interactions of different organisms and so on and so forth. Uh, but underlying all of those phenotypes, and I do mean all of those phenotypes, uh, is some kind of molecular basis. Uh, biology can easily be thought of as simply the molecules and how they interact and everything else. And in fact, that is a dominant perspective for a lot of people who do biology. And when you're doing molecular microbiology, uh, you'll have a context within which you'll be caring about the molecular aspects that you're studying, which will be phenotype and pathology, for example. Uh, but it is the molecules that really get the people who do molecular biology up in the morning. It's what they are in there to study. Now, when I say that we can talk about the molecules as being uh, based on different kinds of things like biochemistry uh, versus uh, molecular biology or molecular genetics, uh, these are, are really are very much different perspectives on the, uh, how to study these molecules. I personally uh, was trained initially um, in biochemistry and so I have a lot of appreciation of the changes that occur in the course of physiology to small molecules uh, and also uh, the fine structure of proteins and enzymes and, and how this impacts their functioning and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of people who study uh, microbiology um, don't have a background necessarily in, I should say molecular microbiology if I didn't, um, don't necessarily have a background explicitly in biochemistry. And in fact, a lot of what molecular microbiology consists of these days is something that, that certainly on its surface seems like biochemistry, but, but really is um, the study of the nucleic acids of organisms and specifically the sequences of those nucleic acids. And these sequences are determined uh, through DNA sequencing. And in fact, if I may, uh, I can, I'd like to say that at this point in time, we basically have uh, three ways that uh, biology is studied and certainly microbiology is studied. Uh, one of them is the study of uh, the actual biochemistry or at least the, the wet lab um, things that can be determined about the molecules uh, that are so associated with microorganisms. And then there is the stuff that derives from DNA sequencing. And then there, in a sense, is everything else that's associated with microbiology. And it is these first two things, studying things molecularly in a wet lab, uh, and especially DNA sequencing that has come to dominate um, molecular microbiology, and as a consequence of that fact, microbiology generally. It didn't used to be uh, this 
um, this, these, this particular emphases, uh, what happened is uh, that with the rise of DNA sequencing and the sequencing of, of the human genome, which really drove the development of DNA sequencing technologies, uh, DNA sequencing became very cheap, very inexpensive, um, and as a consequence, very powerful. Uh, and so people now can simply sequence DNA um, and study organisms from that perspective and sequence a lot of DNA and, and, and associated with a lot of different organisms. Um, in many cases, doing things uh, even associated with wet labs uh, that used to um, require much more subtlety in how they were done, uh, where you had to determine phenotypes or you had to come up with some basis of getting a handle on what different genotypes might be. Um, these uh, approaches all don't give you as fine a grain perspective on things as does DNA sequencing. Because ultimately phenotype is a function of DNA sequences, especially in DNA um, genomed organisms. Uh, it would be based on RNA sequences and RNA-based genome viruses. But in any case, if you're going to have changes in these organisms occurring, those changes by and large are going to be seen in the DNA sequences. So if you want to determine whether two organisms are essentially identical or determine whether two organisms have subtly changed from one another, these days there's nothing easier than to simply sequence the DNA of those organisms. And it used to be that sequencing was relatively hard and you had to zero in on some particular gene um, so that you, you know, didn't have to sequence the entire genome. But at this point in time, it's so easy to sequence the genomes of especially microorganisms, which have relatively small uh, genomes, uh, that simply sequencing the entire genome, all the DNA that's associated with an organism, uh, is a legitimate way to characterize a strain or a variant of a strain uh, that you might be working with in the laboratory or might have isolated um, from the community, or for that matter, from nature. Uh, and so DNA sequencing has become very powerful as a consequence, has become essentially its own aspect of uh, molecular microbiology unto itself that we can think of as, as being equivalent to the rest of molecular microbiology, um, especially because um, it, it now makes up such a large fraction of the study of the molecules of microorganisms. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, because sequencing has become so ubiquitous and because people have, in fact, for a long time, have been highly encouraged when they sequence a gene or an organism or whatever, uh, to um, put those sequences, uh, in, ideally in an annotated form, uh, into databases, uh, it's possible to do essentially molecular microbiology uh, without, in fact, uh, touching microorganisms at all. Uh, all you need is a computer, uh, and in fact, um, the computer allows you to access the uh, genomes and the sequences of lots of different organisms, in many cases done multiple times, and you can in fact do true studies of microorganisms just based upon what other people have sequenced. Uh, so you, you basically, in, in the study of molecular microbiology, we've uh, reached a point where um, we don't even have to uh, go into a laboratory anymore um, to do these studies. Now, if you, if you do go into a laboratory and you do isolate organisms and you do sequence those organisms, I mean, obviously you have the potential to be generating data uh, that other people have not generated, and so there is utility to um, being in the laboratory. Uh, but nevertheless, it's quite possible for people to do analyses um, that um, just are done on the computer, that are just based upon studies that other people have done.